You found the WMIX Saturday Sports Show on AM 940 at WMIXSports.com. Cared for by Crossroads Community Hospital, the Saturday Sports Show has been recognized by the Illinois Broadcasters Association as one of the top radio programs in the state. That means the very best mix of local sports content is right here. From the powerhouse on Broadway, the Saturday Sports Show starts now. And we welcome you in on the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. So glad to have you with us today. Don't forget, you can always stay up to date with everything WMIX Sports on social media. Of course, Facebook.com slash WMIX Sports. You can find us on the Twitterverse as well at WMIX Sports. With Danny Zerwinski, I'm Chris Hugo. Jeff Crow is in studio with us as well today. As we bring you a nice assortment of guests and content, we'll talk with Mountford and Rams head basketball coach Scott Gamber. Rams got a big win last night over the Altop Crusaders at Chagnon Gymnasium. You heard it on WMIX. You listened to it on WMIX, or you watched it, I should say, on WMIXSports.com, assuming you weren't in the gymnasium. We'll also set up this week's schedule, weather permitting, with Mountford and Liddy Rams head basketball coach Jeff Lana. We'll kind of reflect on 2013 to a point, and then we'll talk about what's to come in 2014 for the Liddy Rams. We'll have a few new guests today, guys who we may have had on one, two times before, but... We'll talk with Matt Morgan, of course. He is the head coach of the Ziegler Royalton Tornadoes. ZR, of course, fresh off of a fifth-place finish at Cesar Valier. Of course, they won the Conrad Allen Holiday Tournament a couple of weeks before that. We'll talk with Matt Crane. Matt Crane, of course, Carterville native, head coach of the Carterville Lady Lions. His Lady Lions are off to a hot start in the River to River, Mississippi. Of course, just won the Benton Ranger at Christmas Classic, sweeping that tournament. We'll talk with Randy Smith-Peters, of course. We'll see how his spirits are. Bulldogs, of course, Harrisburg Bulldogs head coach. They were surprised last night by the Benton Rangers. Of course, we'll check the WMIXSports.com scoreboard in just a moment. We'll talk with Shane Witzel. Surprise, surprise. The Woodlawn Cardinals, of course, win the Cesar Valier Holiday Tournament this week. And then we'll talk with Lee Bennett. His Orphans are still undefeated, and they won the Central Area Holiday Tournament this past weekend. And uh, the Orphans are off to a nice start. Hot start, I believe. 12-0 and is the Orphan record to start, of course, undefeated in the South 7 Conference, obviously. But a nice start for the Centralia Orphans. They actually have a game today that has been moved up. They've asked us to help get the word out. The Orphan game today against Sacred Heart Griffin has been moved up to a 3 o'clock JV start. It'll be a 4.30 varsity tip. Of course, our sister station, X95.3 and WRXXradio.com will have the call of that one. Ryan Rowdy and Mike McManus later on today. But a loaded lineup today. We also have our WMIX Sports social media question coming up on the social media. Should be a good program with all that we have coming. Today, be, yep. yeah, like the lineup, a nice little lineup, some differences, some different nuances. Should be a nice thing we have for you here today on the Saturday Sports Show. Of course, the WMIXSports.com scoreboard. Uh, not a lot of games last night. Not as many games as I thought there were going to be last night whenever it came time to put the scores together. Won't be any next week either. Um, South 7, Mount Vernon beat Altoff 69-62. Carvindale beat Marion 60-36. Midland Trail last night. Waltonville beat Weber 48-27. And Wayne City, a great comeback from a behind win, beat Sisney 35-33. Black Diamond last night. Chester beat Alvarado 75-30. And Trico nipped ZR at home 56-55. River to River, Mississippi. AJ lost at DuCoin 60-52. Nashville went on the road and beat Carterville 51-38. And Sparta spanked DuCoin 63-40. In the Ohio Benton breaks a long losing streak to Harrisburg, 71-65. Murphy beats Frankfurt, 60-51. And Massac County beat Heron, 55-51 at home. Non-conference last night, it was Cesar Valer over Carrier Mills on the road, 58-42. Newton beat St. Anthony, 36-27. And Caro beat Crab Orchard, 82-77. In the Apollo last night, Effingham beat Mattoon, 55-35. And Charleston edged Salem, 54-51. Of course, every night that there's local action, you can find a scoreboard at WMIXSports.com. And tonight, perhaps, might be the last night of scores for quite a while. Of course, the area under a winter storm warning effective at midnight. Not really midnight tonight. That would technically be midnight tomorrow, of course. But a winter storm warning, of course, in effect for the area. Expected to blanket the area with quite a bit of snow. Obviously, very, very frigid temperatures coming in, of course, after the storm. Sunday into Monday, Monday of course, with temperatures below zero so it should be a cold one of course take the necessary preparedness and precautions uh, after the during and after the winter storm travel safely stay tuned to wmix and wmix94.com wmixsports.com for any future cancellations should they be necessary of course in the coming week but we have Malford and rams head coach scott gamer coming up 
In just a moment, we'll talk about last night's big win over the outs off Crusaders. 69-62 is the final. You just heard it from your WMYXSports.com scoreboard. Archive will be up in, in a GIF. And we take a look at that game last night. We said it in our Landers Collision Center's pregame show last night, Danny. A, a must-needed victory last night for the Mount Vernon Rams. Much needed in terms of conference. If you go have three losses this early in South Seven Conference play, any hope of the South Seven Conference championship is out the window. Well, two may be too late, but three would end any hope that you have of possibly doing anything conference-wise. And Mount Vernon was able to hold serve last night against an Altoff team that became way too perimeter-reliant last night in their offense down the stretch. Couldn't get back in, couldn't hit the outside jumper, and Mount Vernon gets a big win, of course, 25 from Braden Fitzgerald to, to lead the way. And Mount Vernon gets that big win and, of course, you know, setting up a decent week if the weather doesn't hold or whatever. You know, you get four games in eight days to kind of see where you're at. But that was a major win. Of course, Altoff now 0-3 in South 7 play, pretty well eliminated from c contention of a, of a conference championship. But Mount Vernon hanging on at 1-2 and two and has, you know, of course, Lovejoy on Tuesday. But next Friday at Carbondale, what a big game that will be for both teams as Carbondale looks impressive last night beating Marion. Well, and Carbondale's a team that's really kind of under the radar right now in the South 7. I mean, they got some talk before the season started. Uh, they went up and won the Quincy Thanksgiving tournament, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, played pretty well up there, but then you take a look. The Orphans right now kind of drawing the focus, especially after winning the Centralia Holiday Tournament and being undefeated. But really, when you take a look at the conference, Carbondale could be a nice little upstart this year and, and a threat, a viable threat for a conference crown. Well, I think Carbondale, the thing is that they, they're not getting a lot of pub right now. I think with number one, they, haven't, they won the tournament at the beginning of the year. They didn't win their Carbondale Holiday Tournament, finished like third or fourth. But what has happened, they got five very good guys and maybe one more bench player. After that, they're kind of thin. Top to bottom starting five, they've got, probably got five of the best players around. But, uh, you know, when you're throwing in the likes of Cahokian with the state last year, Centralia is undefeated. Altoff got second at Collinsville, one up at St. Anthony and Thanksgiving. They're kind of getting second rating, but – the Terriers at home are obviously a different chore. A lot of teams struggle when they go into Carbondale and play, and Mount Vernon will find that out next uh, Friday night when they have to take on Terriers down there. Well, it's kind of a, a mixed stretch for the Mount Vernon Rams. Of course, the win last night at home against the Altop Crusaders and go on the road Friday night. You assume the game right now, as oh, of now, if the, no weather, assumption. if the weather holds, it's, it's not going to be it's not going to be played Tuesday night, more than likely. It'll hold. They're going to drop the puck at the city park. <laughs> they're going to go there is what they're going to do. Supposed to be Lovejoy at home on Tuesday, on the road at Carbondale Friday, Northwest Academy of Law out Was, of St. Louis Is that St. Louis? Saturday. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. That... that Hello, Valley and Apollo. That's, Care to play somebody in the South 7 regular season? That's, Thanks. That's Saturday night. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I mean, you know. And then uh, Friday the 17th, it'll be the Orphans uh, coming to the Shagnon Gymnasium before heading to Salem, of course. So a mixed test, I guess you could say. Well, you have two games you should win and one game that's tough, I mean, uh, of the four. So four out of eight games, but. You know, it is what it is, and you go from there. But you got to take everybody seriously because Mount Vernon's a good team that just can't walk in and go, okay, here we are, look at our jerseys. They're not that quality. Just something about directional, directionally named institutions that make that crack me up, and I can't help it. I try, tried to work on that wow, okay. the past few years. But, you know, give credit to finding games. Southeast and, Missouri State said, well, what's so funny? No, oh, high schools. Oh. Centrals, things like that don't bother me. When you have, like, Northwest, Southeast, that type of thing. Oh, okay. I don't know why. Ever since I was a little kid, can't help it. Anyhow, we need to get Scott Gaber, head coach of Mount Vernon Rams basketball, here on the Saturday Sports Show on WMYX, WMYXSports.com. We're back after these. Learn to live healthy, learn to live well, and learn how you can live free from unexpected medical expense with a major medical expense policy from Pekin Insurance and the Page Agency. Health insurance that covers hospital, medical, and surgical expenses offers a wide choice of deductibles and a non-tobacco user discount, too. Rising medical costs don't have to be a problem with a major medical expense policy from Pekin Insurance. This is coverage we hope you'll never need, but you just can't be without. Call the Page Agency at 242-7000 about a major medical health insurance plan today. 
Here's Jeff Schmidt for Schmidt Chevrolet of Mount Vernon. Our customers really enjoy coming here for service. They can pull in our service drive where it's climate controlled. This time of year when the weather starts getting cold and snowy and rainy, you pull inside where it's dry and warm, get out, walk right into the customer lounge for free coffee and warm up, watch television. So it's really great. I hear a lot of compliments about our new facility. Schmidt Chevrolet of Mount Vernon, 3423 Broadway in Mount Vernon. Hey, welcome you back on the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. Glad to have you with us today. We're here until 10 o'clock. Of course, starting things off with the head coach of the victorious Mount Vernon Rams last night. He's Scott Gamber. Scott, good morning. Morning. How are you guys doing? You know, I'm doing pretty well this morning. I have a feeling that you're doing better than well, I guess. Rams get a big win. Home court last night at Shagnon Gymnasium, 69-62. to over the Altop Crusaders, a team that had a very good holiday showing, finishing runners-up to the Lincoln Rail Splitters at the Collinsville Holiday Tournament. So Altop came in high on all cylinders with an 8-3 and three record, and the Rams did a good job of shutting them down last night. Yeah, that, that was a, a huge game for us. Um, obviously, being 0-2 in the league, we could not afford to drop to 0-3, especially with last night being at home. And like you said, they... They came off a tournament where they beat a very good Urbana team. They beat East St. Louis by 10 and gave Lincoln everything they wanted. And I thought, I thought on the offensive side of the floor last night, it was maybe our best performance as far as moving the ball and knocking down shots. Uh, still have a lot, a lot of work to do on the defensive end, but it was, it was nice to, to play well and and to be able to finish out the game the right way rather than you know, rather than the other team not make enough plays to beat us at the end or, you know, we, we just barely hold on. We were able to take care of the ball, make a few free throws, and, and win a lot a lot better than what we've done the last, last few times we've had a chance to close down. Pretty cohesive effort last night from your team, minus Gilwan Nelson. How did that affect at all him not being able to start and or play last night in that game? I mean, as far as depth, um, I think it, it, it hurts us, but uh, I, thought, I thought Luke Wilson did an outstanding job of stepping up, and I thought Luke did a really good job on the defensive end. So we asked him to guard a good one kid at times. We, we asked him to guard Gooch at times. Uh, for a kid to have started, not only step in the lineup to guard the other team's best offensive threat, uh, I thought it helped. And what I guess we were very fortunate with is that after the Effingham T Town tournament, we were like starting starting that Monday of, of this week. We started working Brayton a lot more at the one. Jake at the two and Gilwan at the three. So luckily, we had already been working on that all week, and then Gilwan gets hurt Thursday at practice, and Luke was able to slide right into that three spot. So fortunately for us, those guys had already gotten a lot of work, kind of shifting positions a little bit. Um, so when he did get hurt, there wasn't quite as big a scramble and. I thought Blake Jones gave us good minutes in the first half. It was nice for Tyrez Moore to get in there and give us you know, some good minutes when when Jake was in foul trouble. So we, we were fortunate. I'll, I'll talk to a good team, and I think they're with their youth, they're a team that's going to keep getting better throughout the year. A guy I thought at the beginning of the game, I know Fitzgerald's going to get a lot of the credit for the points, as will Pike and Hawkins, but a guy I thought that kind of set the tone and stabilized things, not only offensively but on the boards as well, was Doug Gardner. Had a lot of good points early, a lot of key rebounds early. That kind of set the tone for your team last night. Did it very quietly in the first part of that game. I I completely agree. Doug, Doug absolutely put us over the top last night. We don't win without the game that Doug gave us. Uh, both sides of the floor, and then um, he's four for four in the fourth quarter from the free throw line, and both times it was a one-and-one one situation. And the first time he went to the line, it was a five-point game. 
he doesn't knock down those free throws there, it's a completely different um, out, you know, possible outcome. Um, for him to knock down those free throws and, and to play the way he did, I, I thought was huge for us because uh, we, we needed that. Because like you said, Braden, Braden's going to have nice games like he had last night. I thought, I thought Braden played a, a huge, huge game last night. Um, but it's, it's, it's other guys stepping up, and I thought that really played well last night. As you go in the next week, you have three games allegedly scheduled next week, the weather coming. You have Lovejoy on Tuesday before you go to Carbondale on Friday. How much of a issue or how much of a thought do you and your staff think about keeping your kids focused on Lovejoy and not to look ahead to Carbondale on Friday night? Yeah, I mean, that's something that we've really got to got to do a good job of here today at practice and, and Monday is um, really, really get our kids focused in on um, on playing on playing Lovejoy. We're coming off a really big win, and we've got a big road conference game Friday, but, but Tuesday's game is just as important. And um, you know, I really hope that the weather cooperates enough to get that game in Tuesday. I, I really like the Tuesday-Friday setup. Um, I think it would help us quite a bit to get that game in. Spent last night and this morning watching a lot of Lovejoy films. You know, they're they're kind of an up and down team. They're they're three and seven, so their record's you know not great. But they played Carlisle to a five point game and led most almost the entire game at Carlisle. They've got a couple kids that can score. They I mean they they push the tempo. They shoot a lot of perimeter shots, and, and you know, you've got to be ready on the defensive end and. Watching the Carlisle game, the thing that really stood out is how important taking care of the ball is. Because in the Carlisle game, what what kept them ahead the whole time was they just got an enormous amount of transition baskets. They're getting a steal, um, get a bad shot, pushing it. So I think if we if we take care of the ball, I think you can get the ball in great spots and, and can really hurt them. It's just if you get lazy with it, they can make you pay. Well, uh, make you pay indeed, and of course, I believe Lovejoy now in the Salem tournament. Do I understand that right? Yeah, yeah. So we could see them a couple times here in the next couple of weeks. Now yeah, we'll figure out what happens there. Of course, we'll talk more about them next week. But Northwest Academy of Law out of St. Louis is also on the slate for Saturday after the Carbondale game. What do we know about Northwest Academy? You know, they were in the uh, they were in the Alton tournament this year. Um, and then they were in the Chaminade Christmas tournament, and um, so I mean they they played O'Fallon and, and Alton and those guys. Um, you know they're they're scary because people wise they're they're pretty good. They've got a lot of links on them. I, they remind me a lot of the the Al Rab Al Rabby or however you say it. The, the team out of Chicago that we played at the T Town tournament. I don't know if they're quite as good as Al Rabi, but they're, they're very similar teams. They have the same type of length. They play the same type of style where they play you, you know, that funky zone where they're trapping a lot of different places. And, um, I think that, that the Lovejoy game will, will help prepare us for, for Carbondale as far as being a lot of pressure. And then I'm hoping that, you know, facing, facing a Carbondale defense is very tough. We'll, help prepare us for Saturday's game against against Northwest Academy. But we're going to have Carbondale, not to look past anybody, but with it being our conference game, that, that's a game um, they're capable of really playing well. And, and that, that's a game where we're going to have to come out and we're going to have to play better than what we've played at, at any point this season if we're going to go down there and win. But I also think it's a game that we can win. I, mean, I think we can compete with beat with Carbondale, and it's got to start with stopping Devon Tavius Payne and, and then kind of going from there, because he's a, in my opinion, he's a Division One player, and he's as good as anybody in the league. Well, of course, when you look at Carbondale, it's always a tough place to play at Carbondale High School. Uh, Mount Vernon obviously gave Carbondale their first loss on that floor way back when, but you, you take a look at how tough it has been to play Carbondale there. You look back to a regional championship game a year ago. You look back to some of these games. How tough is it to play at Carbondale? Is it tougher than anywhere else, or is it just it's tough to beat anybody on the road? Yeah, I mean, I think it's tough to beat anybody on the road, and, and they've 
mean, they've had some really good people, and um, you know, any, anytime you're playing a team with that kind of talent on the road, it's, it's that much more difficult. And I think our kids like playing at Carbondale. Um, it's it's a thing where um, they they just they can attack you in so many different ways. I mean, obviously, Devontae is saying they're number one, but then they got Jordan Kelly inside. He's a really tough matchup for us, and I thought was kind of the key to Carbondale beating us last year was the emergence of Jordan Kelly inside. Um, they really pounded it into him the last two times we played him. Um, Billinger's a really nice point guard. Bidinger's been hurt. Um, I, I think he's back. I think he played last night against Marion. And then um, they've got some nice pieces around them. So they're, they're scary in that they could score. They, they have a lot of offensive threats. And then their pressure could really bother us. Their, their pressure bothered all pop while I watched the all pop Carbondale game at Carbondale. And, and I think they're just going to throw a tremendous amount of that at us. And, and it's something that with the next three games like they are, it's, it's something that we're going to have to, to really get good at. Our final question for you is our social media question of the week, and it's kind of New Year's Eve-ish. Uh, our question this week is, what is one – New Year's resolution you are not going to do? <laughs> well, I was trying to not drink soda, and that's not already worked, so I guess that's the resolution I'm not going to do is, <laughs> is stop drinking soda. I can't do it. Not during basketball season. You just need the caffeine? I mean, you can't switch to coffee or unsweetened tea? I, I can't. It's, I've gotten off Mountain Dew, which I guess is a good thing, but but I still I can't get away from having a Coke or a Dr. Pepper. It's just too tough. It's too tempting. Huh? I can understand that. St- stressful basketball season. Rely on the old sugar water and sugar carbonated exactly. water to get you through. Scott, obviously best of luck yeah. to the Rams this week. Hoping to get three three games in this week. Of course, Tuesday, Friday, Saturday. Hopefully, Mom Nature will allow that to happen. All right, I hope so. Thank you, guys. And, uh, I guess the Centralia game, is it a 3 o'clock game? That is, is that a correct? 3 o'clock JV, probably a 4.30 varsity start. All right, perfect. There we go. Perfect. Scott, Scott Gamber, head coach of the Mount Vernon Rams, here on the Saturday Sports Show. WMAX and WMAXSports.com. We are here until 10 o'clock. We need to take a break. When we come back, we'll visit with Mount Vernon Letty Rams head coach Jeff Lon, and we'll talk with Coach about the season to this point and maybe we'll foreshadow a little bit of what's to come, hopefully, this week for Lady Rams Basketball, it's Saturday Sports Show from WMIX Sports. We're back after these. This is Chase Landers with Landers Collision Centers. Imagine this. You're driving down the road. It's dark as can be outside. Thank goodness you just had that left headlight bulb replaced. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see a thing. Now, close your eyes. Okay, don't close your eyes. You're supposed to be driving. Imagine noticing a slight twinkle off to the left, just above the ditch. What is that, you think to yourself? All of a sudden, whack! You've just encountered your first deer hit. The left side of your vehicle is beat up pretty bad. The next thing I want you to imagine is very simple. Picking up your phone and dialing one triple eight landers to set up your repair. Deer claims are common, and usually a very simple process which fall under comprehensive coverage. This is Chase Landers asking you to allow landers to be your collision repair shop of choice. Whether it be a deer hit, fender bender, or the regular, uh uh-oh, sorry mom, Landers is here for you whenever you need us. Big or small, Landers fixes them all. One triple eight Landers. That's one eight 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 Landers. Your spine is a miracle of engineering. So when pain strikes, your body is telling you to get help fast. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois is proud to feature their spine care team. Doctors Kowalski and Smith, the professionals at Orthopedic Center, specialize in back and neck pain. So put our spine care team on the job. Find out more online at orthocenter-si.com. Stop the pain, fix the problem, and enjoy life again. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois. Hi, this is Joe David Cummins, President of Community First Bank. By now you have heard about our new One Checking product. The new One account is a high interest earning, free checking account designed for everyone. Unlike other banks that pay interest on higher balance, this account pays interest on all balances. From high schoolers to Warren Buffett, One will work for you. You can talk to one of us at 244-3000 and learn about the details. One, exclusively at Community First Bank. You will be one happy customer, member FDIC. Anxiety, 
And we welcome you back on the Saturday Sports Show on WMIX Mount Vernon, WMIXSports.com. Chris Hugo with Danny Zaransky alongside. Jeff Crow is with us as well here at the Powerhouse on Broadway. Our next guest, he is the head coach of Lady Rams basketball. He is Jeff Lonnen. Coach, good morning. Good morning, guys. What's up? Not a whole lot, just ringing in the new year the right way here on a Saturday morning here at the Saturday Sports Show. But looking forward to talking some Lady Rams basketball. Of course, we talked extensively about the Mascuda Holiday Tournament last week, and we're hoping to talk this week, of course, about some basketball games to be played here this week. Mom Nature doesn't look too cooperating in the early going, however. No, it doesn't look like it. I, I don't know what's going to happen with, uh, you know, tomorrow, excuse me, Tuesday at uh, St. Anthony, but that's the second try we've had it trying to get this one played. You know, this one, this is already a makeup date from that big uh, snowstorm we had there about a month ago. So, I don't know. Well, you know, it is what it is, and we'll hopefully get to play, and if not, then we'll just move on. And I don't know if that'll attempt her time. So, so start uh, down the road. So, of course Chef Lon and having some cell phone issues apparently this morning we'll try to catch up back with him with in just a moment of course we're talking about the Lady Rams schedule supposed to go to St. Anthony on Tuesday in a makeup game from December the 5th but probably not going to happen but you take a look Lady Rams have had some recent success against the St. Anthony Lady Bulldogs hoping to maybe get that one in if it doesn't happen on Tuesday night with the winter storm morning you're assuming that maybe that's a possibility to not happen but all in all, Lady Rams have had some recent success against them. But then a new entrant to the schedule on Thursday night, if they can get that one in, as Christ Hour Rock Lutheran comes to Shagnon Gymnasium. Lady Rams playing a 1A team that appears to be on the up and up out of the Egyptian Illini Conference, Christ Hour Rock Lutheran. So we'll see what happens with Lady Rams against Mother Nature this week. Maybe they can go 2 0. But a big game on Saturday coming up against Triad as well. So a busy week, weather permitting, for Lady Ram basketball. Well, they haven't played in 10 days, so that's going to be a problem. I think uh, unless you get multiple practices in and whatnot, that's going to be a thing where they they are hopefully have had to probably use their time wisely in order to get as much practice time as possible, work on those things in these 10 days they've had off. Well, yeah, they've used the time efficiently, I'm sure. Jeff Lawton back with us now. Jeff, where in the heck are you? I, well, I'm talking on my phone. I don't know what happened. You know, you, you guys are – coming in loud and clear on my end, but I guess I'm not I'm not returning the favor. <laughs> You're good now, but of course we were talking about the St. Anthony game and how it's already a makeup date. Yeah. Possibly a chance that it may not be played on Tuesday night due to the weather, but it's a game I think you'd want to play. Lady Rams have had some recent success against St. Anthony, whether it be at the Enloe Center or Shagnon Gymnasium, usually on a Thursday night. And a game that you want to get in, it's a good 1A program, always on the borderline of 1A and 2A due to the multiplier or lack thereof at times. But all in all, yeah. a good team to play, a good team to have on the schedule. Yeah, and they're better this year. I mean, they're, I think they're about 8-2 eight and, eight and, uh, or 8-3 and three right now. I mean, they, they are better this year. And, uh, you know, that's a game that we have handled here in the last couple of years and, and gotten victories out of, but... You know, I think they're getting better, and, and it'll, it would probably be, if we get to play, I'd anticipate it being a closer game than it has been in the last couple of years. Um, you know, I try to keep up on, on them. I, you know, I was reading some little articles yesterday on some of their recent games, and, you know, they really pride themselves on their defense, and, and uh, they use their defense to create offense and, and all those things that, you know, you, <clears throat> you, you know, you, you know, that's, that's how you become successful is, you know, you play great defense. And that's number one. I mean, and, you know, it sounds to me like just reading the paper that, that, you know, they have kind of taken that road and taken that philosophy, and I think that they're a team that it could give us some issues. But at the same time, we certainly don't want to shy away from that. We want to go play them because we do have a little bit of a successful history against them. And, you know, we're not, we're not too bad ourselves. So, you know, I, I, I have – I have uh, – I have a great desire to go play them, but I just don't know if the weather will play, you know, let us or not. So, and if not, you know, we got we got another uh, game on Thursday, and then another game on on uh, Saturday that we can uh, we can go and hopefully compete in. But you know, these three these next three games, if indeed we do play St. Anthony, they're very important for us because we're getting ready to hit one of the toughest stretches that we've hit in a long time 
after that on our schedule. Looking at that, you haven't played. It'll be 10 days on Tuesday. Is Camp Lonnen been very good at getting some things done and worked on with your team over the past uh, what will be 10 days? I think that I think that we have, um, well, we, here's the deal. We, we, we tried to balance that out. We tried to give them some rest. Uh, we did take two days off, the first and the second, um, and let them spend some time with their families over the New Year's holiday. And then we also we also worked pretty hard whenever we were in the gym. I think the things that I've tried to focus on since our last game was all the things that I see on film that we don't do a very good job of, you know, and, and I, you know, I'm, I can list them right now. I mean, number one, first and foremost, we don't feed the post very well. I think whenever our post players are open, I don't think our perimeter people either can't recognize it or they recognize it and don't feel like they can make the pass or don't know how to make the pass. I think that's a real big issue with us. Uh, and then, you know, this is after self-scouting, which I try to do as much as I can. And, you know, by watching the film, you kind of can't help but do that. I mean, it's pretty, pretty plain on the film whenever you, you know, your kids aren't doing certain things very well. I think that's very important. Number two, we got to get better defensively. I think when you allow 50 points to a Freeburg team, there's only, you know, one, two or three games. And I think that, you know, if you think you're pretty good defensively, then I think you need to reevaluate yourself. I think that, that, that you know, we are pretty, on normal nights, I think we are a pretty decent, you know, defensive team. But I think it's more about an intensity and an attitude that sometimes we may not quite bring to the table. Um, and I understand it's a 10 o'clock game in an auxiliary gym 70 miles from home uh, and, and all that good stuff, but you got to bring it every time. So, you know, that concerned me a little bit, giving up that many points to, to Freebird. So we've worked on that a little bit. Um, number three, and certainly not least, shooting. We have not shot the ball very well at all. Uh, quite frankly, from the perimeter, not well enough to, to you know, um, not well enough to say we're good shooters, that's for sure. And, and so we have done a ton of shooting drills, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> over the last, well, since again, since the, since the Muscoota tournament, uh, and I would say those three things um, have been what we have focused on, and those have been our three main weaknesses that I see on film when I watch his play. And you know, it's easy to spot those things when you got the rewind button in your hand, and uh, it's not so easy when it's in live action. But you know, with a rewind button in my hand, I can spot a lot of things that you know we just didn't do very well. So. You know, and then you work on those things for eight or ten days, and you give them a couple of days off, and and then you come back and you hope that uh, the next time we play, which is hopefully Tuesday, that uh, you can see some little bit of improvement in those things. Well, of course, that brings us to our WMIX Sports social media question of the week. You'll have to forgive my verb. It's trying to remember the exact wording. What is the one New Year's resolution that you won't make? I tried to get this out of you about 30 minutes ago. I know. I, just... I, I, I didn't see it. I, I don't know why you would tell me this. Because, see, I, I like to think about the question before. And I, and I missed it whenever Gamer was on because uh, my iPad cut out. <clears throat> so well, I, will, I will try to answer this question. So, But here's the thing with that. A, I either want you to go look at our Facebook page and like that if you haven't already. I believe you did a long time ago. But, A, it's for the sake of social media trying to get folks over there to check it out. So you could have looked there and found it or, you know, trying to get people to listen to the show. So you were obviously listening and you just happened to have uh, a bad spot in the Internet at that point. So, Well, basically I had two New Year's resolutions. Number one was to hopefully win the South 7 Conference again in girls basketball. The second one was to lose that, that same 20 pounds that I always say I'm going to lose. The one thing that I hope I don't achieve if I have to stick between one of those is obviously the weight loss. So the other one is pretty important. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with uh, the New Year's resolution that I will not achieve will be losing 20 pounds. Right. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that's a safe. That's about as safe as, as you can get. You couldn't find any safer bet than that, even if you traveled to Las Vegas. 
it's always tough to try to lose weight during basketball season. Is what I always tell everybody. So, hey, it's tough to lose weight during any season. <laughs> That is a fact. Lon, and hopefully, uh, weather permitting, of course, we will see you Thursday night. I know you guys have a game scheduled for Tuesday. Unable to be there, unfortunately. But weather permitting, hopefully see the Lady Rams on Thursday against Christ Our Rock. Yeah, and uh, I'm going up there to watch them play today. They play at 2 o'clock this afternoon, so we're going to practice from uh, 11 to 1. And then uh, we're gonna, I'm going to just run up there and watch them play and get a little scouting report on them. And just after that, we'll just come back and just cross our fingers on the weather. There you go. That's pretty well all we can do, Lon. And thank you for taking the time to join us today. All right, guys. Have a good day. Thanks. That's Chef Lon and head coach of Lady Rams basketball. Supposed to be in action on Tuesday against L- That's the Rams. Tuesday against St. Anthony. Thursday against Christ Our Rock at home. And then Saturday at home during the day against the Triad Lady Knights. We'll take a break on the Saturday Sports Show. When we come back, we'll catch up with Ziegler Royalton Tornadoes head coach Matt Morgan on the Saturday Sports Show. Back after these. Hi, this is Joe David Cummins, President of Community First Bank. Now is a great time to move your account to Community First Bank. With our new one account offering the highest interest rate in the market, free checking, and CD specials delivered by people you know and trust, why would you not bank with the market leader in Jefferson County? We offer five locations with seven ATMs and have been serving the Jefferson County market since 1906. Stop in and see why our bank is the fastest growing bank in Jefferson County. Community First Bank, welcome back to Personal Banking, member FDIC. I couldn't resist. Last month's Ram Truck Month was so successful, I have decided to extend the only true truck month. Hi, Roy Schmidt, Ram dealer at King City Chrysler, Mount Vernon. You remember me telling you that the deals couldn't get any better, and it can't. That's why I'm glad to extend the opportunity for 0% financing for 72 months, plus $2,000 cash back on new 2013 Ram quad cabs and crew cabs with the Bighorn Express or Outdoorsman packages. 2014s are arriving daily, and we are ready to deal to help close out the 2013 model year. Take advantage of these amazing incentives. Come see one of our sales associates at King City Chrysler Center at 1603 Broadway in Mount Vernon, Illinois, or shop us online at kingcitychrysler.com. Find us on Facebook, and don't forget our new Express Lane Fast Oil Changes and More for service without an appointment. And we welcome you back on the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski alongside. Jeff Crow with us as well in studio at the Powerhouse on Broadway. Our next guest, a new voice to the Saturday Sports Show. He is the head coach of the Ziegler Royals and Tornadoes. He is Matt Morgan. Coach, good morning. Good morning. How are you guys? You know, doing pretty good. You guys are off to a nice start. Of course, the ZR Tornadoes are champions of the Conrad Allen Holiday Tournament. Runners up at Christopher, fifth place at Sasser. You factor that in with a, a pretty gaudy record, and ZR's off to a good start this year. Yeah, um, we lost a tough one last night, but we're sitting at 12-3, and three, and um, I couldn't be more pleased with where the kids are right now and how they've played so far this year. They're, they're playing their butts off for me and um, doing everything I ask, and I'm very happy with where we're at. A lot of people don't realize we haven't played a home game yet. Wow. See, you've played three tournaments. You haven't played a home game, but I noticed backloaded on the second part of the schedule. How weird has that been not to have a home game in the, all the way through 2013? Hey, it's been pretty different. Um, you know, I'm with the tournament's loaded up at the end of the year. We've, the last couple of weeks, we haven't had very many practices either. So we haven't been in our gym very much lately, but we're looking forward to getting back in there and uh, getting prepared for Chester on Tuesday. Your team, I saw them, of course, at at Cesar Valera last week. Very impressed with a couple of guys, Bailey Schimpf and Nick McPhail. To me, two of the better guard duo tandems as far as Class 1A is concerned. I really like the way those guys play on the floor. Yeah, they complement each other very well. Um, you know, they, they make each other better from the fact that uh, Nick's so, so good at penetrating and um, – Bailey's ability to not make that three-point shot makes teams stay on, on him and kind of opens up the lane for Nick, and if they do collapse, he can kick it out there. 
and uh, that goes for some of our other guys too. We, we've got the ability to spread the floor out and uh, open wide for Nick. And you know, so far this year, he's done a pretty good job of making the decisions. I think what you have in a team, you got a pretty good mix. You got Brandon Jones underneath. You have Brandon Stubblefield and Andrew Reese and other couple of guys that go out and play as well. I really like to mix your team. It seemed at Cesar uh, through the tournament, you have a team, top to bottom, starter to bench player, has a role, has a job, very in tune to what you're trying to get done there at ZR. Yeah, we play eight, nine guys, and they've all bought into the system we're running. Um, we're not very big, but our guys that do play the four and five position are pretty skilled at that position, so uh, they hold their own in there with some uh, pretty big guys, and uh, like I said, I'm very proud of them so far, um, and they've all bought into it, and that's, that's a major part of the reason we've got 12 wins so far. Hey, look at your schedule. You're one of the few teams that already has your three tournaments in for the year. You'll have all regular seasons the rest of the w- games the rest of the way. Uh, back-to-back Christmas tournaments. I mean, you went from Wayne City winning it to having a good fifth-place finish at Cesar Valera. As a coach, is that kind of weird to have those tournaments back-to-back and that's all you play is tournament games for a couple of weeks? Um, yeah, it's one of those things where there's positives and negatives to it, but I like it in the sense that it throws us in the fire early in the season and um, we really get to see where we're at. And then the second half of the season, we can really um, adjust and make uh, – changes where we need to make and see what we need to work on. But I, I do like it because it throws us into the fire at the end of the season. But like you said, it is difficult because it is so many games so early on. Uh, you get Chester next Tuesday, weather permitting, and then you get a 10-day break before Cesar Valera. You play the Red Devils. Uh, how do you – a 10-day break, January, that's usually midwinter time. Do you like that, having that in there, to have some days to work with some things on your team? Yeah, it's usually very beneficial that 10 days off, especially before you go play Seth, or who's usually up there, one of the best teams in our conference, kind of get prepared for them. However, this year, um, we did add in Weber Township from the rescheduled game early in December. So we played them on January 14th. So we actually got a week off um, due to a reschedule, but that still gives us a week off to try to, try to um, get prepared and make adjustments moving forward. Looking at your schedule, can you believe, i got to ask you this, that it, uh, it's been 10 years since you won a scholarship on a website. Has it really been that long? <laughs> on a- well, you know what? I was, I was looking through some uh, stuff at the Southern Tournament and Christopher Tournament this year, and I was like, my gosh, it's been, it's been a long time. So <laughs> it, it's been a while. Uh, I, the other th- you, did, you did go to ZR, right? Do I remember that correctly? Yeah. Oh five graduated. Oh five, yeah. How it's about like it that? Was 04, yep. by uh, it, yeah, it's it sitting there. It's, it's up there. It's it's been a while. So you are getting kind of gray haired now as head coach down there. Been out of school now ten years, aren't you? Yeah, and this this team will get even more gray haired and. They put some stress on me. I can't be that bad. That's a pretty good team you have down there, also <laughs> at ZR. Uh, I got to ask this too. Does anybody confuse you with professional wrestler Matt Morgan? Same name. <laughs> No, I, th- I think the money goes a little different. <laughs> of course, that brings us to our WMIX Sports social media questions. Always our final question. Uh, with every interview we do, we like to go a little off topic, keep it a little light at times. And this week, what we were asking all of our guests and our listeners, what is one New Year's resolution you are not going to do? Uh I'd love to sit here and say that I'm going to do the weight loss uh, resolution, but, you know, during basketball season, there's so much going, and, uh, I don't see that one happening. So that's probably the one I'm probably not going to do. I, I tell my wife all the time, I'm like, I need to lose some weight. And she's like, there's no point in even doing it during basketball season. I'm going to argue with it in the end. It never happens. So I'll, I'll go with the weight loss resolution. <laughs> Solid answer and, and great logic. It is. I've always said basketball season is the toughest season in which to try to lose weight. I always add a few more pounds on every year. And it's, oh, absolutely. Uh, They'll talk to the salary room. We'll get you. Yes, they will. Matt, we appreciate the time. Thank you for joining us here on the Saturday Sports Show. Look forward to doing it again soon. Hey, thank you very much. That is Matt Morgan, of course, is the ER alum who, who took the reins of the Tornadoes, guiding them to a successful year this year. Not a bad finish last year, 17-14, and 14, if I remember right. They did finish over 500 and off to another nice start, 12-3. and three. They're 1-1, one and one, the Black Diamond, their division. And uh, just a good start for Matt Morgan yep. and ZR. He's done a good job, took over at, at ZR. And, and after a talented group went through, the Mitchell group that went through a few years ago, wasn't a lot left on the shelf there, and he took over. 
And when he got that done, he's really done a great job. I was really impressed not only with ZR but with Cesar Valer last week. Two young coaches and Matt Morgan and Shane Garner who have young teams, guys that do a lot, and they are tuned in to what he, their coaching staffs are doing at both ZR and Cesar Valer. But Matt Morgan's a good guy. Well, yeah, and, and glad that we could catch up with him this morning. And you do take a look at their schedule the rest of the way. Chester, weather permitting Tuesday, they have the makeup with Weber Township. That was supposed to be their home game. Yes. Their lone home game. And, of course, it got snowed out on December the 6th. So they're making that one up allegedly on January 14th. We'll see how that goes with the weather. But then you have you know a, a nice slew of home games going all the way up until February the 7th. That's when they go take on CR on the road. Mm-hmm. So all that, of course, depending upon makeups being thrown well, in there as well. They've had 15 road games, but uh, you know you had three at Christopher. You had four or five at Wayne City. You had four at Cesar Valero, all in neutral floors. So uh, you know that that's one of those. Except for Christopher game, that was a home game because obviously that was Christopher in a title game. But for Christopher, but that's a really a road tested team that's finally going to get to enjoy some people coming in there on their home floor in the second half of the season. Yeah, and we'll see how it works out, of course. But we'll catch up with Matt Crane. Matt, of course, is the head coach of the Carterville Lady Lions, and Carterville's off to a nice start this year, fifteen and two. On the season are the Carterville Lady Lions. We'll talk about that with Matt Crane after the break here on the Saturday Sports Show from WMIX Sports. Back after these. I'm Jeremy Pearson with a look at your next rad weather. Breezy today with a blend of clouds and sunshine. High 37. Rain will arrive tonight and quickly change to snow. The snow will continue through tomorrow and accumulate 6 to 10 inches before ending tomorrow evening. Low to night 21. Temperatures will fall in the teens tomorrow. Monday, frigid with a blend of clouds and sunshine. Extreme cold can be dangerous. High 1 below 0. Wind chill 25 below zero. Next red weather from WMIX, Mount Vernon, Illinois. Too expensive to get back into shape? Not anymore. Ren Lake College's new fitness center is only $53 per semester. They've also thought of everything with universal machines, free weights, treadmills with dedicated TV screens, ellipticals, and more. Qualified dance instructors are also available. Or go at your own pace with DVDs that can be used in the exercise room. Best of all, it's open seven days a week. Check out the Ren Lake College Fitness Center in the marketplace off Potomac Boulevard in Mount Vernon. Or log on to renlakecollege.edu slash Fit Center. It's back. The award-winning WMIX Sports Basketball Showcase has the very best in high school basketball this winter, and Community First Bank is along for the ride. Hi, this is Terry Prosize, a vice president from Community First Bank of the Heartland. WMIX and WMIXSports.com will have the best games involving the Woodlawn Cardinals, Weber Trojans, Waltonville Spartans, Cesar Valera Red Devils, and the Wayne City Indians. Tune in to WMIX and WMIX Sports for the showcase, presented by Community First Bank of the Heartland. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC. And I leave your heart out on the dance floor. Put your hands up. It's all right. And we welcome you back on the Saturday Sports Show. WMIX, WMIXSports.com. Glad to have you with us until 10 o'clock. I'm Chris Hugo. Danny Zerwinski is alongside. Jeff Crow with us as well. Here from the powerhouse on Broadway. Our next guest is the head coach of the Carterville Lady Lions. Lady Lions off to a 15-2 and start. They are champions. They swept the Benton Ranger at Christmas Classic on Monday. Of course, Matt Crane, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, a pleasure. Always like to reach out to, to new guests. And, of course, you, uh, Carterville native, you take the reins of the Lady Lions. And things are off to a hot start, as we said, 15-2, and two, but... Most importantly, you sweep the Ranger at Christmas Classic, featuring the likes of the Benton Rangerettes, the McLeansboro Lady Foxes, Trico, among others. So a nice showing for the Lady Lions. Yeah, it was a really nice showing. I was really proud of them, and I was impressed with them, just the way they, they withstood, you know, four games in, in, two, in two days. And, you know, Benton was a physical game. Goreville was a, a, you know, a game that's close to my heart just because I was down there for five years, and I know those kids, and, you know, so we took care of business on those on the first day and then came right back and turned around and played with uh, Ham, Hamilton County first thing the second morning and they've got a really nice squad too and uh, you know the girls just they just persevered and were resilient and and, and just kept fighting and, and found a way to get it done and I was just I was really excited for them and proud of them. In your time at Goreville and coaching with the boys and, of course, transitioning to girls, and I ask this all the time, but coach is the first time they're on the show. Hi. The difference between coaching boys and coaching girls that you have seen in your time? Uh, there isn't. Girls listen a little better than boys do. Um, you know, they, they, they try to take it in more. Boys, boys will be boys, and that's, uh, that's not a knock on them. I mean, I was one, too. Um, you know, things... 
there's not a lot of changes. I told my girls, I said, I'm going to try to, I'm going to coach you as players when we're in between these lines and treat you as young ladies when we're off of them. Um, you know, I want us to play uh, a brand of basketball that, that kind of resembles the boys up and down and let's move and let's go. But, but the girls do listen a little better. Um, girls, on the other hand, you know, they, we were doing a drill the other day that was not real fun and, you know, boys will, will, will moan and groan and girls, they were singing a song. So, you know, whatever you got to do to get through it, it, it is what it is, but, but they're a lot of fun, both, both boys and girls, and I, uh, I'm really enjoying myself this year. Talk about some of the kids that you've been relying on to get to this 15-2 and two record so far this year. Uh, well, we've got a transfer that moves in at Sydney Smith. She's a, she's a fantastic shooter. Um, she's averaging about 20 a game, and her game's getting better every week. Uh, she, she's in the gym in the mornings before school almost daily. Um working on her game and, and wants to play the next level, and she has a chance to do that. And then I've got uh, two more seniors with Kelly Hicks and Jordan Gaston, who are returners. They, they didn't start last year, but they've been in the program, and Coach Rogers did a, real, you know, a, a great job with the people that have been there. Uh, they won a regional last year, so they know how to win. And then I've got my, you know, getting some good help from my juniors, Lauren Balestro and Taylor Dunning, and then my sophomores, uh, We've got uh, Avery English, who is a competitor. She just gets after it. Uh, she's a head softball player, head for basketball player, just a really tough all-around athlete. Maddie Meyer, uh, she's the girl that runs track. You know, that people probably heard about in Southern Illinois. And she's just she's just an athlete that doesn't like to lose either. Uh, you know, and then I've got a couple of girls, uh, freshmen, uh, Chandler Collins and. Uh, Megan Barrett, who stepped up and played some big minutes, and also another sophomore, Cammy Hankins. So, I mean, we're getting production all the way down through each class, and that was the thing that I told them in the tournament. Somebody, everybody that played, and we used a lot of people, everybody did something important at a crucial time. Somebody stepped up and made a play, and we've done that all year long, and I told them that's a mark of a good team because, you know, we not one person can win the games, but we're all going to win them, and, and they're, they're buying into that, and, and they're Taking it seriously. Next week, uh, next Saturday, in fact, a week from the day, you host the Carterville Winter Classic. To me, quietly becoming one of the better midwinter girls tournaments in Southern Illinois. Talk about and tell us what teams are involved in that tournament next week. Um, without a sheet in front of me, I'll, I, I think it's us and Hamilton County, Steelville, Cobden, Ziegler. Um, I'm trying to think. There's a couple more. I can't remember. I because I'm new to this, and I don't have the sheet in front of me, so I haven't had a chance to study it. I apologize for that. Uh, but it is good. It's a, it, you play two games on the first Saturday, then you play a game on the uh, midweek during, uh, on Wednesday night, and then we come back and we play uh, another two games on the following Saturday. So, so it'll be a, you know, a test of will again and, and who, who wants to fight through fatigue and, and all that on those games. We play double, double games on a single day. Ask I got to ask this a qu- trivia question: Who holds the record for most free throws made in IHSA game? <laughs> That's a tough one. I have to think about that for you, a second. You have to think about that. But I think it's me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I think it's me. <laughs> what was it? Thirty-three of thirty-five against Vienna. Thirty-three of thirty-five. Yes, first game of my senior year. That was a long time ago. I had to think about it for a second. <laughs> uh, what do you remember about that game? Besides, obviously, the record. But what do you remember about that? Anything at all? Well, I remember that we won, which was big. You know, I mean, that was important. And I mean, I and you brother, I did score fifty-one, and so I, that was my career high. So I remember that, and I just remember, you know, uh, I didn't know realize I had shot that many free throws. I knew I had sh- shot a lot, and um, when I when it was over, I was just like, wow, I can't believe that happened. But but uh, it was, it's a good memory. Well, that's a good. That's a good deal to have somebody like that in the record book here on the Saturday Sports Show. And our final question for you today: We always ask a social media question of the week, and this week's question is: What is one New Year's resolution you are not going to do? Oh, I'm not going to start a workout plan. That's, that's Don't blame me there, because <laughs> I'll because I'll start it and then. I mean, I'll, uh, I'm trying to stay steady, and I'm trying not to do something that I know that I'm going to fall off the wagon. So, and I'm not going to say I'm going to go on a diet either because I like to eat. So, uh, so I'm not going to do the standard ones. No. <laughs> there we go, Coach. Thank you for taking the time to join us today on the Saturday Sports Show. Best of luck to the Lady Lions. 
Fifteen and two is a nice start. I know you headed into the tough Carterville midwinter, of course, coming up. And also, keep my boy Phil Meyer in line down there. Oh, you know? I'll do it. I'll do it. I appreciate you letting me on the show, and look forward to hearing from you again. Always a pleasure. Matt Crane, head coach of the Carterville Lady Lions. Of course, many may remember the days of Todd Rogers, the AD, of course, being the head coach. Matt Crane now the head coach and doing a great job with them. But they will also head into a tough stretch of their schedule, not only with the Midwinter Tournament, but they still have Pinckneyville twice. They still have Nashville remaining on the schedule one time, um, barring, of course, any makeup games. But uh, a tough, tough go for the Lady Lions. And they have that tournament next week. Uh, Todd Rogers, athletic director, just texted me. Nice. Let me know that uh, – the teams involved at the Carterville Midwinter Tournament are Ducoin, Murfreesboro, Benton, ZRC, Hamilton County, Cobden, Steelville, Johnston City, Century, and of course Carterville. It's a nice little lineup and a I feel like you're doing facility. something if you win that tournament. You know? Yeah, it's it's quietly started up a couple years ago and it's quietly becoming one of those midwinter tournaments you kind of keep an eye on because of the teams, the quality of people who run the tournament, and of course that facility they have down there at New High School, New Gym. Well, yeah, and and the whole Tri-C setup is one that if you're going to have to build multiple facilities in the same community in a short period of time, uh, Carterville did it the right way, in my opinion. So Carterville, Cambria, Craneville is the Tri-C. A lot of, some people don't know that. But, you know, they, they have a lot of success on the softball side, obviously. And it's good to see some of that success kind of bowling over to the girls' basketball standpoint. Track program is on the rise. So. Well, they always have had good basketball i mean they've always had track yeah they've always had good golf girls side they've always had softball that's right. no doubt basketball's always been there i mean that goes back 10 15 years they've always had good teams it's kind of been this shadowed as far as yeah. it goes in carterville as far as that and the conference and and you know getting into river river now you're falling in the shadow of nashville and aj and and teams of that ilk that have done very well but carterville slowly coming around matt crane to helm will do a very good job down there no doubt about it. Good to talk about the IHSA free throw record. It was nice to be able to talk about that. 33 of 35 free throws. That is absolutely incredible. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll give you our answers to the WMIX Sports Social Media Question of the Week. We'd like you to participate as well. What is a resolution you are not going to set? Are not. We all have the usual ones we talk about every year. I haven't said anything, so really that, could I guess, could be my answer early on. But what will the real answers be? Stay tuned after the break on the Saturday Sports Show. We're back after these. There's a good reason why Second Chance Auto has been in business for 33 years. They believe in doing business the right way with honest deals. It's the only way they know. And thanks to Second Chance Auto, you don't have to head out of town to get financing. They offer bank rate financing to everyone. Yes, everyone. You'll find a great selection of quality vehicles with three-month or 3,000-mile warranties. Come see why they've been successful for 33 years at Second Chance Auto. Route 142 East in Mount Vernon. Call 244-4582. If you can't pick us up where you live, move. Move. This is WMIX, Mount Vernon, Marion. Another Withers Broadcasting Station. What does technology sound like? Is it the clang of heavy machinery, the beeps and chirps of an electronic gadget? At the new Good Samaritan Regional Health Center, technology sounds a little something like this. It's the sound of a young girl excited because her mom's being released the same day as her minimally invasive surgery. Thanks to the Da Vinci Surgical Robot, our surgeon's hand motions are seamlessly translated into smaller, more precise movements. But surgery isn't the only way Good Samaritan is raising the bar for advanced health care in Southern Illinois. That's the sound of a patient's health record being updated and stored electronically for immediate access by nurses, primary care doctors, and specialists alike. That's why soon, the new Good Samaritan Regional Health Center will use all electronic patient health records. Less paper translates to faster, better care for you. And that sounds a little something like this. The new Good Samaritan Regional Health Center. Raising a hospital, raising the bar. Are the features with your free checking account disappearing? Hi, this is Nina Reitnauer, Relationship Banker with People's National Bank in Mount Vernon. A free checking account from People's National Bank includes unlimited check writing, no minimum balance requirements, online banking, bill pay, a Visa check card, and only takes $100 to open. Stop by People's National Bank and get the free checking account you deserve. People's National Bank, serving Southern Illinois since 1909. Member FDIC, non-usage fees may apply. Too high. It takes you on a ride. You feel it with your lifestyle. Survive. 
Saturday Sports Show on WYX and WYXSports.com. With Danny Zerwinski, I'm Chris Hugo. Jeff Crow is with us as well. As we welcome the head coach of the Harrisburg Bulldogs, he is Randy Smith-Peters. Coach, good morning. Good morning, guys. You know what? I, ignoring last night temporarily for right now, we take a look at the El Dorado Holiday Tournament where the Bulldogs, obviously a home away from home in Duff Kingston Gymnasium, but you win that tournament for the fourth consecutive year. You have to feel pretty good to win that tournament four times in a row. Yeah, you know, without a doubt, uh, that was uh, the way we looked at it and the way we talked to the team before that, a, a history-making opportunity. Uh, one, only one other team had ever won it three times in a row, and, and that was back in the early 90s. The North City Reed Jackson-led team uh, was able to win the EHT three times, and uh, so we were in a situation where we had the opportunity to, to be the only team to win four times in a row. I really didn't know if we could do that. It was truly a challenge with uh, with a competition that's always there. It's always a very tough tournament, and we, and we knew in front of us would be uh, North City to open up with, and then we um, expected a Heron Carmike contest following that, and also expected to run into Massac County, a team that had defeated us only a few days before that, and to get through that and then have to face a, a very athletic and very skilled Meridian team was, was truly a challenge, and, and I really am happy for our guys that, that stepped up and accepted that challenge and played very well. Speaking of challenge, of course, a talented group walked through last year and graduated. A lot of pressure, a lot of success. This year's group, has it kind of been their stick to say, hey, you know what, we're good too, let us go out and carve a niche of our own in Harrisburg Athletics as far as what they can do on the floor? I think that's exactly been their attitude, and, and what you have here, you know, we have Eli Tabin Scott back as, as the lone starter from last year's state champion team. We have Bahari Amaya, um, a junior, who who contributed greatly to that team off the bench, and those are the only guys we have with basically any experience at all, and I think if there's any word that, that fits this team, it's just inexperienced because we've got uh, some really nice athletes and really nice players that have played behind a great group basically their entire career, and, and they've, they've not had the, the true game experience that uh, I think many of our opponents have right now. And every game's a learning experience. Um, uh, there are a lot of things that we have to get better at, and I think this group realizes that. Uh, you know, we go to Massac County or, earlier in the year and uh, really take it on the chin, facing a team that will be really motivated and Played, played very hard in, in a hostile atmosphere, so to speak, um, at Massac County. And, and that was that was a, a, a learning process there. That's something that we needed to experience to get better. And then we come back uh, and play in a few days later in the holiday tournament, much more prepared. And, uh, you know, we go to Benton last night, uh, probably coming down off of our high as a, as a EHT champion and go to Benton. You know, lose a game to Benton, a conference game that we didn't want to lose. But again, I think that's the inexperience that shows up with this group. And and I knew going into the season that uh, you know this was this was a, a situation where we wanted to take each game to get better. And I think we just have to experience some of those things. I think a, a coach can talk and talk and talk and explain about being prepared for every game, but until you experience that and understand that everybody you take the floor against can beat you. That uh, that just kind of kind of goes um, right through their head, I guess. I, I don't know how to say that, but uh, I don't think they understand that until they do experience it. So, so we're trying to work and get better every game. With the exception of last night, I mean, as far as a program's concerned, when a high school team or any team, whatever level, wins its championship, a state championship, national title, professional title, whatever. How hard, what, what has been a task for you and your staff to keep those kids' heads out of the clouds and their feet on the ground, per se, as far as getting into this season at the beginning? Well, I, I think they have to realize that, you know, they, they, uh, you know, the fact that the program's done well doesn't, doesn't uh, carry any weight on, on Friday night. Just like winning the, winning the holiday tournament and the headlines that we got there, all the pats on the back that you get when you go uptown, uh, doesn't mean a thing when you walk in Rich Heron Gymnasium last night, and I think that's something that you just have to uh, to, to experience to understand. I, I think everybody feels like um, you know, proud of what they've done and, and, and proud of the program, and that's good. But you just have to know that when you strap those shoes on, that it everybody starts out at the same place. And also, I think something this group has to realize, and, and we've tried to explain, is that 
everybody wants to beat you. Uh, you know, we walked around with a target on our back last year, uh, being number one in the state most of the year. I think we walk around with a target on our back uh, this year uh, because we, we have gone to so many places and won so many games over the last uh, few years that, that people really like to beat the Bulldogs. And I understand that, and I've been on the other side of that. And it's something this group has to realize every time they take the floor that, that it's a big game for wherever we are. Speaking of a big game, an oddity on Tuesday night. You pick up Woodlawn on the schedule. Battle of two teams that have four-peated their holiday tournaments. That's got, that's unique in itself. But uh, a game that you don't normally see between a, a 1A and a, th- a 2A in Harrisburg, but a nice game for your program at Woodlawn to get together on Tuesday night. Yeah, uh, and really how that happened was uh, we got left the game short uh, due to a glitch in the schedule. And then I'd heard really... Almost uh, when basketball season raced, I'd kind of given up on trying to fill that spot. And I'd heard that, uh, that Woodlawn was, was a game short also, perhaps a, along the same reason why. And I called Shane and I said, hey, here we sit. And, you know, what do you think about this? And he said, oh, we're just, we're just you know, we'd like to play uh, play that game and we'd like to play somebody that's, that's pretty good. So it, it just really kind of worked out for both of us. Um, it will be an interesting game. Um, really concerned about the weather right now as I'm sure everybody is for a lot of reasons and a lot of different events uh, but uh, you know, they four-peated at, uh, at Cesar Valera very very as you would expect with a Shane Wetzel team a, a very uh, disciplined team a team that makes very few mistakes a team that, that uh, beat a good Johnson City Indian team in that championship so uh, it'll be interesting and, and again you know we want to play people uh, that makes us better, and I think that game, win or lose, is a game that will make us better. You know, we we need to uh, we need to experience the discipline type teams, also the skill type teams, and, and uh, we, we, my guys have never been in the Woodlawn Gymnasium. We need to experience those things to make us better. Uh, you got to do us one favor, though. Jeffrey Drake's not been to Woodlawn either. Can you keep him in line as well? We will. We'll tell him to follow the bus, and, and we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on him. Now that's that's the problem, though. It made our Jeff. That's made our job a lot tougher right there, so uh, we'll do our best. Because <laughs> if I know Jeffrey, he's probably very concerned about how to get to Woodlawn, what time to get to Woodlawn. <laughs> <laughs> probably so. Probably so. <laughs> Coach, that brings us to a question we ask all of our guests every week, try to lighten it up a little bit, with the WMIX Sports Social Media Question of the Week. And this week we're asking, what is one New Year's resolution you are not going to do? That's a tough one. I'm not, uh, you know, it's a really hectic time for basketball people in the New Year's, and we, we kind of rush through that. So, uh, you know, I, I, I guess diet would probably be, be the one thing that most people look at, and uh, that's just not going to happen. I mean, it should happen. There's no question about that. I would not debate the, the fact that it should happen, but um, that's one thing not on my list. It's just a bad time to try to diet. The late nights, it I mean, is. it's hard to get a meal in at the I proper time. Many times a bad time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there you go. No doubt about that. Coach, obviously, best of luck the rest of the way and a great job with the 4 P at El Dorado. Congratulations again. All right. Thanks for the time, guys, and I appreciate all you do for, for the sport. Thank you very much. That is Randy Smith, Peters, head coach of the Harrisburg Bulldogs, of course, defending state champions in Class 2A. and. Just doing another great job this year. And he mentioned young and inexperienced and, you know, a tough loss on the road at Benton last night, 71-65, but a Ranger team that also, of course, has something to prove. Speaking of teams with something to prove, the Woodlawn Cardinals always trying to prove something. Four-time, wait, four-peat, I guess, would just be the easiest to say. Champions of the Cesar Valier holiday term. I was trying to go like a DDP type thing there. It didn't work. It didn't quite work. <laughs> So let's take a break on the Saturday Sports Show. When we come back, we'll talk with Woodlawn Cardinals head basketball coach Shane Witzel. Saturday Sports Show from WIX Sports. We're back after these. America is a nation on wheels. Everyone has at least one automobile. We use them for shopping, work, everything we do. But they can be a threat. Some accidents can't be prevented. Your professional Pekin Insurance Agency, Page Insurance on Crown View and Mount Vernon, can help protect you from a large financial loss when an accident happens. Call Page Insurance today at 242-7000 about low-cost auto insurance from Pekin Insurance. Ask them about the many money-saving discounts that are available. Depend on your hometown professionals. Pekin Insurance. 
Renly College's Adult Volunteer Literacy Program is looking for volunteers to help stop adult illiteracy. Give the gift of reading and be a hero forever. Renly College will provide you with training and materials to help adults develop the basic reading ability needed to excel. You can work one-on-one, tutor a small group, or work with students in an adult education classroom. Experience the joy of helping others and change a life. Call Renly College's Volunteer Partnership toll-free at 800-369-5321, extension 1342. Here's Jeff Schmidt for Schmidt Chevrolet of Mount Vernon. The new 2014 Malibu has been redesigned, and what a fantastic car. It's got more rear leg room than the previous model. It's got a redesigned front end and rear end. It's a quiet riding car. The fuel economy is one of the best in its class. The ride handling is remarkable. People really like Chevrolet MyTouch. The technology that goes into the Malibu is really second to none. Schmidt Chevrolet of Mount Vernon, 3423 Broadway in Mount Vernon. And we welcome you back on the Saturday Sports Show, WAX, WAXSports.com. We're going to catch up with Woodlawn Cardinals head coach Shane Witzel. Lee Bennett still to come, head coach of the Centralia Orphans. But you take a look at the Woodlawn Cardinals on the air tonight against the Heron Tigers, back-to-back games against the River to River, Ohio, after winning their fourth consecutive Cesar Valier Holiday Tournament. I was unable to see any of those games, but I listened to the Johnston City game. What a great matchup that was. Winning at 44-43, the Cardinals win the championship for a fourth time in a row. Uh, Jefferson County has claimed the title since two, going dating back all the way to 2008 between Woodlawn and Waltonville. But to uh, not score in the fourth quarter, outscored 4-0 by J.C. And to still win that game, obviously there's a lot of things to be said about your defense and a lot of things to be said about having the composure to not panic in that type of situation and, and to still come away with a win. Well, and, and you took the schedule coming up. Besides that tournament, you got Harrisburg, t- Heron denied Harrisburg on Tuesday. At Sandoval on Friday, at Hamilton County Saturday, North Clay, Heron, you know, North Clay, Weber, and Modern Day. That's a lot of games for you in the middle of midwinter tournament. Of course, the Midland Trail Conference. A lot of at that games point. and a lot of good games for the Woodlawn Cardinals. Welcome to the program, Shane Witzel, head coach of Woodlawn Cardinal Basketball. Coach, good morning. Good morning, guys. Congratulations again. Fourth consecutive Cesar Holiday Tournament Championship. And I ask you this, I think about every tourney championship or every state trophy. Does it ever get old? <laughs> no, no, it really doesn't. I mean, and, and you're so happy for your team and for your players and uh, your fans, and, and also for us as coaches, we get enjoyment out of it as well. But you know, as a player, you, you know, you see all the work that they put into it, and and every team does, and and you like to see that kind of where it pays off, and they get some rewards for that, and uh, the enjoyment of the competition and and all of that makes the game extremely fun to play and. Uh, yeah, we've been pretty fortunate down there, and uh, we've had some really good games, and we felt like that's kind of sprung us forward going into the, the second part of, of our season, and, and that's the hope for this tournament this year as well. Looking at this group, every year every team tries to find an identity of what they do, how they do things, how they go about their business. How much did that tournament championship help your team find an identity as they head into the second half of the season? Um, I think it's important to play in close games. You know, it's something that you prepare for in practice, and and uh, you try to get ready for that kind of thing. But you really don't know how you're going to respond in those situations and how you execute at the end of the game when when everything's on the line. And we had three games right in a row where we had to do things correctly on both ends of the court to win. So in that regard, um, it, you know, it may, hopefully will give us some confidence going forward that we can close those games out. And, uh, but we still have some question marks, too, and we still need to be more consistent. And there's definitely things that we need to improve upon because the, the margin of error between winning and losing is pretty small, and it comes down to execution. Four games in the Cesar tournament I thought were four very different games. Valmeyer was kind of shake the holiday rust off. ZR was a close, lower-scoring game in the 50s and 40s with you know good defensive stops at the end. Goreville, you had to pick it up a notch, come back and beat them, chase them from behind in the 60s. And in Johnston City, the question I've been asked all week to ask Coach Witzel, how can you win a game and not score points? My response was, in the fourth quarter, my response was, Woodlawn got the trophy. But... When you don't score points, that tells me the other team couldn't have scored very many because you wouldn't have won the game. Your defense had something to do with that. Sure. I mean, uh, 
you know, we're not going to put an asterisk next to it or anything. Um, it's not something he obviously is ideal, but the idea is, and I was kind of joking afterwards, the idea is to be ahead at the end of the game. And and uh, we missed some shots, but Johnson City guards well. Uh, they guarded us well the entire game, and overall our offense was pretty efficient, and so was theirs. The game was very clean. There wasn't a lot of turnovers. There wasn't a lot of fouls. A lot of contested shots, not a lot of offensive rebounds, very similar on both ends. And uh, we did the same with them. We, we tried to make them take some difficult shots and limit their second-chance opportunities. And um, they, they had, I think, four in the quarter as well. But we would have thought that the offensive execution at the end of the third quarter where we got a, a good shot for Hateman out of an offensive set uh, to get a three would be the game winner. So... Um, I, I don't even really remember the last time we didn't score in a quarter in any game, let alone in a championship game. And that leads to now the second half of the season, of course, tonight. You you jump into the – nobody told us. We didn't know you guys were joining the River to River Ohio division here recently. Uh, you have Heron tonight at home, Harrisburg Tuesday at home. And that's a that's a way to kind of bring your team back from the, from the clouds, isn't it, playing a couple River River schools? Um, yeah, um, and that's just kind of the way it worked out. The Heron is a reschedule from uh, January the 18th. They they were rescheduled for them, the SIU shootout, so they needed to move that game. So that was really the only good date that we could work. Um, and then the Harrisburg was, was similar. That was a late addition this past fall. Uh, but two quality teams. Heron played Massac really tough last night, so it'll be a big test for us tonight. And, of course, Harrisburg is, is very good. So two home games that our fans will get to see. Uh, hopefully they'll be quality games, and and uh, we're going to have to do things correctly in order to give ourselves a chance. And So we're looking forward to the opportunity. And, and in some regard, uh, too much time off can, can be a bad thing, too. We've not got to play a lot of games, so uh, particularly for our young kids. So this is important to, to get this second part of the season going. Of course, weather permitting, you have Heron tonight, Harrisburg Tuesday at Sandoval Friday, at McLeansboro next week, North Clay, and then Modern Day, all before the Midland Trail Conference Tournament. Looks like the Woodlawn Cardinals are going to be pretty ready for MTC tournament play come January 20th. Well, we're going to play a lot, and uh, this first part of the season, we've had a lot of practice, and, and uh, we need to get into some game situations. So, um, yeah, we're going to get a lot of court time for uh, both our varsity and JV, and and there's going to be some good teams in there that we're going to play, and each and every night we're going to come ready to play. And those things actually will sharpen you, and if we can become more consistent on both ends of the court, uh, we can have chances to, to get to where where we think we need to be uh, as the season progresses, where you get ready for postseason time. But there's a lot to happen between now and then, and we still have a lot to play for, and we still think that we got a ceiling that we need to reach. Is it quiet around the house today? I hear some people on Twitter off and running about the state. It, it is quiet. Uh, my family's at the uh, cheerleading state tournament today, so um, not a lot going on. Uh, not a lot going on here. Hey, uh, our, our uh, you, the the hint on Twitter was for you to give a shout out to your wife, but uh, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Um, I'm, sure having a, I'm sure they're having a good time. Uh, yeah, I'm sure they're not having trouble finding anything fun to do. Um, our final question this week is our social media question of the week, and this week's question is, what is one New Year's resolution that you are not going to do? Oh, my. I don't normally make New Year's resolutions. Um, hmm. I was trying to think of something real witty to say, but I'm thinking real good. Uh, I can't even think the last New Year's resolution I've made. I know I don't make one on uh, the uh, taking care of my health issue, <laughs> particularly for the during the basketball season. I always blame things on basketball and too busy for this, too busy for that. And every year I start the year out where I feel like I'm in pretty good, pretty good shape or, or as good as I can be in after the golf season of walking all those holes and that kind of thing, and then it all falls apart in the winter. So I would say that's probably it. I, I, can... um, I did make – I tried to be like Coach Helbig. He went one – almost one solid year where he didn't eat a fast at a fast food restaurant. I thought that would always be a good one. But when you're on the run and you're busy and 
unfortunately, that tends to be where you do is you go through the drive through and that's <laughs> definitely not a good good eating habit. No, but basketball is always a nice excuse. One, a card that I like to play as often as possible. <laughs> well, you know, it's not a good scenario, that's no. for sure. Coach, uh, best of luck the rest of the way, obviously. We'll see you tonight as the Cardinals take on the Heron Tigers. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. That's Shane Witzel, head coach of the Woodlawn Cardinals. For Pete, of course, at SV. And just things going so nicely for that program. And you kind of look at it, and it's a nice measuring stick. Uh, for other programs as well. But we'll see the Woodlawn Cardinals tonight against the Heron Tigers. A 6.15 JV start means an air time probably about 7.25-ish or so, of course, from Sides Gymnasium. It'll be on 94.1 FM, online at WMIXSports.com, the Woodlawn Cardinals and the Heron Tigers. That is tonight. We need to take a break. When we come back, we'll have the head coach of the undefeated Central Orphans, Lee Bennett, on the program. This is the Saturday Sports Show from WMIX Sports. We're back after these. I'm Jeremy Pearson with a look at your next rad weather. Breezy today with a blend of clouds and sunshine. High 37. Rain will arrive tonight and quickly change to snow. The snow will continue through tomorrow and accumulate 6 to 10 inches before ending tomorrow evening. Low tonight 21. Temperatures will fall in the teens tomorrow. Monday, frigid with a blend of clouds and sunshine. Extreme cold can be dangerous. High 1 below 0. Wind chill 25 below 0. Next rad weather from WMIX, Mount Vernon, Illinois. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy offers convenience and great service, all for the same cost. Our pharmacy staff is so helpful. They're always ready to answer any questions you may have. You'll never wait hours for your prescription. We'll get you in and out in just minutes. Or, for added convenience, use one of our two drive through windows. For those folks who prefer to stay home, our delivery service will bring the medications to your front door or your workplace. Here's pharmacist and pharmacy owner Eric Black to tell you more. Home delivery does make us stand out from the crowd. Independents uh, like the medicine shop offer home delivery. People find that so convenient and not just seniors uh, but also busy professionals. Delivery to work or to their home once they get home in the evenings is just a, a service that sets us apart from our competition absolutely. It's so easy to transfer your prescriptions. All it takes is a phone call from you and we'll take care of the rest. The Medicine Shop Pharmacy accepts Medco, TRICARE, Express Scripts, and many other 90-day plans. The Medicine Shop, 2339 Broadway in Mount Vernon. And welcome back on the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. Chris Hugo with Danny Zerwinski alongside Jeff Crowe in studio as well as we welcome the head coach of the CHT champion Central Orphans, Lee Bennett. Coach, good morning. Good morning. You know what? You've accomplished a lot in your coaching career. You're a Hall of Famer. You've gotten a trophy at State. You, you did a lot of things in the Southwestern Conference. You've dominated the South Seven. But is there anything a l- more sweeter, or is there anything sweeter than a Centralia Holiday Tournament Championship? Well, I, I tell you, it's a it's a neat thing. It's a neat thing for home community. Um, I, I'll tell you, Chris, I, the sixteen team tournament. You know, a true sixteen team one champion tournament. I just don't know if people understand how um, tough that is to come along. I, I remember um, when I was coaching at Dakota High School, and, and um, my last six years there, we we kind of got on a roll. We weren't great. But we were decent. We got on a roll. We started winning a bunch of games, and um, we won. And we were like a four or five seed in the tournament. We won. Uh, it, it was the Forest and Holiday Tournament. It was a sixteen team tournament. And I remember coaching that that team and, and winning that tournament. I just was like, wow, you know, because I never thought that, you know, be able to coach a team that won a sixteen team tournament. You know, I mean, that was a a, a big deal, and, and it's just so hard to do. And, and, and so, uh, consequently, it feels really good when when that happens. And I remember how excited I was then. And, and then, you know, as things moved on and things have kind of gone well. It, it, we were able to win the CHT a couple times at Alton, and, and so I had that feeling. But never as the home team. Um, and so now that that's kind of a unique feeling in and of itself. But no, that's it's a that's a really neat thing. I think when something is so hard to accomplish like that that when you do it just it really makes it uh worthwhile i mean you, you think about it if you that's a you know if, if the odds go as planned that's something you get to do once every 16 years so i mean if, if it's something that happens once every 16 years on average it's a pretty big deal and so i you know our guys are pretty excited about that as they should be 
looking at that, you also won your Thanksgiving tournament. You won your holiday tournament. If you could bottle one thing that has helped your team get off this undefeated start, what would it be? Well, you know, and, I, and I, it's funny you ask that because I reflect on those things all the time. When you're not doing well or you want to do better, you, you reflect on what are we doing, what can we do better. But then, you know, sometimes things are going pretty well for you and you, you start to think, okay, what is it that's going well that maybe we need to make sure we're doing more of or, you know, if things get away from us, we need to make sure we're getting back to these things. And it's kind of hard to put our finger on it right now. I mean, I do, I do think the fact that we have um, an experienced bunch it's helped us, you know, when it comes to things like, you know, following a scouting report or being able to make some in-game adjustments or those guys being able to just play on the fly and, and feel some things that should be happening. Um, you know, I mean, you can't – knowledge is power, and, and it always will be. Uh, and, and the fact that some of these guys are doing this for second and third, uh, in Jake's case, kind of the fourth year and, and – um, that's probably something that's that's certainly been valuable, but now, as the year goes on, the value of that wears because uh, other teams are, are, are you know experienced. Maybe maybe some inexperienced players that you took advantage of before you can't because they're no longer inexperienced players. They played for a full year of report. You know. You mentioned Jake Wood. Can you certify that he will finally be gone after this year? Because he has officially become that kid that just feels like he has been there forever. He has done so many things for that program. And and, and I feel like that with some other kids <laughs> other places, but I know people feel like that with Jake. Hey, we were walking in the locker room the other day before a game, and a referee looked at him and said, you're still here? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think he meant it offensively, but, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, when you, when you play four years um, of varsity ball at the high school level, he didn't have a huge role his, his freshman year, but, um, certainly he, he had a role and, and was, was certainly part of, of the team and what that team accomplished. Um, the, you know, it just, it, it, the thing is physically he's not really, um, he's not, it's not like he's hit that growth spurt. It just never happened. You know, he is what he's, what he's been, but he's, he's honed some skills. He's, you know, he's worked on his footwork in the post. I would put up against anybody's around, you know, uh, and, and then he said, well, if he was 6'5", he was 6'6". Well, he's not. And so he has to do with, with what he has and what he can. And, and he's a strong guy, and he's, he's kind of an explosive guy. You know, I mean, he's got some spring in there. And um, obviously he can, he can shoot it and do some things. And uh, so, he's, you know, he's truly an inside-outside threat. It's, it's kind of Chase Alcorn is, is that for us as well. You know, and, and a guy that's been playing for three years, starting for three years, and Gerard Simmons Young. I don't. I think his sophomore year, maybe he started a little bit, but but played played some, and and so he's kind of a three year starter, and, and it's really you know, Gerard and Chase are guys that have grown physically. You know, Mother Nature's helped them some. Obviously, they've brought their game around a, a great deal, um, and, and you know, so that's that stuff that's you know, the, 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 along with knowing what they're doing out there, I man, it's just helped us get to where we are. I'm looking at your team, and I see today SHG comes to town. When you're talking about having them come to town after winning a holiday tournament at home, how much are you going to have to pull your kids down a little bit and say, hey, you know, that that's over and done with. I'm glad we won, but we got the rest of the season to go starting today. Well, I think the key is that it doesn't start today. You know, it starts in practice, and I, I kind of think that's the key to, to everything. Um, I mean, I don't think you can turn stuff off and on in games. So players that do that are generally not successful. You, you have to, you know, the, the power of habit. And so it has to be done in practice. And, I mean, I was real happy with our guys and proud of them and, and for what they accomplished. But when we go back into practice, you know, they play hard or get called out. You know, they, they have some urgency or some consequences. And then that's, that's fair. I mean, golly, what, what the opportunities that they get here and coming in the gym and working for a couple of hours isn't too much to ask. Um, you know, and they, we, just, we ask them to have some court character and have some work ethic, and if they don't, then it just, it's probably not going to be a very positive experience for them. You know, if they do, generally the, the kids that come through and have that, they have seem to have a pretty positive experience. So, you know, that's, it's kind of their choice. And, and uh, you know, we've had, we, we were a little sluggish there for a couple of days after the tournament. 
Um, and hopefully we've got that addressed. And we had a decent practice yesterday. So, I mean, Sacred Heart Griffin's a good team. They have, you know, if you if the Marine Corps was looking for some young men, they wanted to make a Marine Corps poster, recruiting poster. They could just, you know, borrow a few of their guys. I mean, they're, they're strong, athletic guys that, that really play hard and, and uh, make a commitment at, at both ends, and they want to play fast. And so, you know, it's, it's going to be a real, real tough challenge for us, and, and that's great. You know, let's let's do it. Let's. It's a, it's a unique opponent. You know, somebody we're not real familiar with, and, and vice versa. And so we're looking forward to it. And I know they're looking forward to coming down. And um, I'm sure your listeners know that we moved the JV start to three o'clock, so the varsity will probably be approximately four thirty. Um, and that was just because of the impending storm, and we think it's going to be fine here for our fans getting to and from, and don't really anticipate any problems there. But by the time they get back, you know, to Springfield, because that's over a two-hour drive up there, we wanted to make sure that that they were going to be able to make it home safe. And a good move. And of course, after tonight, you guys may not have to really worry about Mother Nature, but you travel to the Shot Center at Altoff on Friday, Memorial Gymnasium at Heron on Saturday. Shagnon Gymnasium on Friday the 17th before heading to the Salem Tournament. A nice stretch of road games for a team that ordinarily doesn't have to play many games on the road. You know, I thought uh, I thought our, that Mount Vernon game was in Centralia I might on have Friday that. the 17th. But definitely uh, next weekend we uh, we have two road games. And, and uh, we, have, we have a few weekends, I think, that are on the road Friday, on the road Saturday, which, is, which can be tough. But you know, I mean, schedules happen, and, and you have to you have to do that stuff. And anytime you have zero day preps, those games are a little more more difficult. But uh, you know, it's, just, it's a good chance to test the metal of, of uh, the young men involved too. And, and you know, it's just it, that's that's how it is. And obviously, when we go to to uh, Elkhoff, that's going to be a very uh, challenging game. I mean, the, the, the length and athleticism and skill set of so many of their guys makes them so good, but but right now we're just going to try to take care of business this afternoon. Our final question of the week this week is our social media question of the week, and this week's question is: What New Year's resolution are you not going to start? Well, um, I, I I didn't make any. Um, I think I think we were too busy to make any New Year's resolutions, uh, so. Um, we're just going to try to just do the best we can each day and, and um, be able to help the guys and, and uh, you know, try, try to stay prepared. That, that's you know, all, all we're going to do here, and, and uh, I'm not going not gonna to falsify any, uh, <laughs> any resolutions. <laughs> there we go. Coach, big one tonight against the champions of the modern-day holiday tournament, the Sacred Heart Griffin Cyclones. Good luck to the Orphans. We'll see you in a couple weeks. All right. Thanks, Mr. Mike. That's uh, Lee Bennett, of course, head coach of the Centralia Orphans, and he is right. The Rams traveled to Centralia on the 17th, not the Orphans to Mount Vernon. My schedule was incorrect. I apologize. Oh, now that we can admit we're wrong, we can move on. We'll take a break here on the Saturday Sports Show from WMIX Sports. We're back after these. This is your local State Farm agent, Tony Wilt. I want to thank Mount Vernon and the surrounding area for continuing to support us over the past five years. If you have never sat down with someone to go over your insurance program, let me invite you into our office. Let us show you what working with the industry leader, represented by a local agent, can do for you. I'm located just off 42nd Street. You can reach our office 24 hours a day at 242-1421 or on the web at TonyWilt.com. Thanks again and go Rams! If you haven't seen it, you're missing out. Hi, Roy Schmidt, Jeep dealer at King City Chrysler Center, Mount Vernon. The all-new, redesigned 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee is a sight to behold. Unrivaled, the all-new Grand Cherokee sets extraordinary new standards for performance, luxury, and attention to detail. From its daytime running headlamps to its power-heated folding mirrors with puddle lamps, ruggedly good-looking and muscular exterior profile, the 2014 Grand Cherokee is engineered with a style and elegance that's backed by the confidence of its all-weather capability and Jeep brand strength. Imagine how great that would look sitting in your driveway. The 2014 Grand Cherokee is truly the best of what Jeep is made of. Come see one of our associates at King City Chrysler Center at 1603 Broadway in Mount Vernon, Illinois, 
or see our selection online at kingcitychrysler.com. The sound of bouncing basketballs is heating up high school gymnasiums. Hi, this is Bria Ashby with Community First Bank of the Heartland. Hear all of the twine tickling action on WMIX and watch at WMIXSports.com this winter. Mount Vernon Rams and Lady Rams basketball is in full swing. Find our broadcast schedule and live audio and video streaming at WMIXSports.com or listen to WMIX on game night. It's Rams and Lady Rams basketball powered by Community First Bank of the Heartland. Welcome back to Personal Banking. And we welcome you back on the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX and WMIXSports.com. Here with you until 10 o'clock. WMIX Sports social media question is going strong. Of course, we're asking this week on Facebook and Twitter, what is one New Year's resolution you are not going to do? I like that. It makes you think. Because everybody sets their, you know, the usual New Year's resolutions. Maybe they want to diet or maybe they don't want to do this or that, or maybe they want to give up soda or, you know, this, that, or the other. DC, what is yours? Being unorganized and or less sports. Hmm. My one resolution to not set is to not set a resolution. Wait, that's, wait, that's a double negative. That means I will set a resolution. Mm -hmm. Huh. Setting resolution. Yeah, there we go. I would make that sound like I'm not going to set a resolution is how I mean that. Not a resolution guy. They're hard to stick to. And why? It's kind of like my thing with Thanksgiving. Why not be thankful every day of the year? But at the same time, you know, if you have to go make a resolution and it's something you need to do, it sounds like there's a greater sense of urgency there than to just do it at the beginning of the year and then forget about it after two weeks. So They say the average <laughs> is by January 15th, most people have forgotten and or stopped their resolutions they set yeah i believe that uh obviously i need to drop some pounds but uh, i think that's a greater need than just the first two weeks of the year and it's tough during i'm nah, i'm not no excuses but man that's just hard to stick to you're better off just if you're going to set a resolution better off having like a mid-year resolution like in june or july or august even i don't know deep thoughts so there we go. What's your answer? Chime in on Facebook, facebook.com slash WMIX Sports. You can find it on the Twitterverse as well. We are at <clears throat> WMIX Sports. We need to take another break here on the Saturday Sports Show. When we come back, plenty more to talk about. We'll run down our schedule and so much more. Hope you'll stay with us until 10 o'clock here on WMIX and WMIXSports.com. We're back after these. Hi, this is Joe David Cummins, president of Community First Bank. By now you have heard about our new One Checking product. The new One account is a high interest earning, free checking account designed for everyone. Unlike other banks that pay interest on higher balance, this account pays interest on all balances. From high schoolers to Warren Buffett, One will work for you. You can talk to one of us at 244-3000 and learn about the details. One, exclusively at Community First Bank. You will be one happy customer, member FDIC. This is Chase Landers with Landers Collision Centers. Imagine this, you're driving down the road. It's dark as can be outside. Thank goodness you just had that left headlight bulb replaced. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to see a thing. Now, close your eyes. Okay, don't close your eyes. You're supposed to be driving. Imagine noticing a slight twinkle off to the left, just above the ditch. What is that, you think to yourself? All of a sudden, whap! You've just encountered your first deer hit. The left side of your vehicle is beat up pretty bad. The next thing I want you to imagine is very simple. Picking up your phone and dialing one triple eight landers to set up your repair. Deer claims are common and usually a very simple process which fall under comprehensive coverage. This is Chase Landers asking you to allow landers to be your collision repair shop of choice. Whether it be a deer hit, fender bender, or the regular uh uh-oh, sorry mom, Landers is here for you whenever you need us. Big or small, Landers fixes them all. One triple eight landers, that's one eight 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 landers. And we're welcome you back, WMIX, WMIXSports.com. So glad you could join us for the Saturday Sports Show today. We hope you enjoyed our lineup, of course, of Scott Gamber, Jeff Lonnan, Matt Morgan, Matt Crane, Randy Smith-Peters, Shane Witzel, and Lee Bennett. 
So thank you for all who have taken the time to join us today. But, of course, uh, so much to look forward to in the coming year with high school sports and high school basketball. Our coverage of high school basketball continues tonight. The Woodlawn Cardinals will welcome the Heron Tigers. That'll be a 6:15 JV start. We're on the air probably around 7:25-ish. As the Cardinals and Tigers battle for a third year, Woodlawn, of course, has fared pretty well against Heron. I believe two and zero. Oh. Yep. Got the first one two years ago. Went to Heron last year and won a hard fought game. That was a very difficult physical game for Woodlawn. That's a game that Harlow got hurt, came went out, came back in, got that one on the road, and then Heron comes back up here today. It's it's a good game for Woodlawn, obviously. Heron, on the other hand, had to go to Metropolis last night, lose to Massac on the road, and get back on to Cheese and head north to Woodlawn. So see a lot of our friends from Heron tonight, I'm sure, making a tr- short trek to Woodlawn. Oh, yeah, it should be a great night for high school basketball. As far as teams, you don't have to travel a lot getting them in at the normal time. Of course, we had talked about some games getting bumped up. Uh, one in particular, of course, North Clay, Waltonville. Waltonville at North Clay is a 1 o'clock JV start today for those of you keeping track. So Waltonville at North Clay is a 1 o'clock JV start. Centralia Sacred Heart Griffin at the CHS Arena is a 3 o'clock JV start, of course, to allow this folks from Springfield, Rochester, Chatham, uh, all, over, all over the place, SHG folk to get back home to uh, where they are headed. Not a lot of basketball today. I mean, you got SHG at Centralia, as you mentioned. Ducoin is at Massac. Pinckneyville travels to Monroe County to play Waterloo. Ooh. And, of course, Heron's at Woodlawn. Waltonville's at North Clay this afternoon. I'm sure there's other reschedules. Um, girls' side, of course, Marshall County at Massac. Ducoin is at Trico. Fairfield, Hamilton County, that could be interesting, allegedly. Or Harrisburg at Hamilton County, nobody knows. Oakville at Nashville. Girls play Cesville at Chester, Carlisle at West Glen, of course. And you don't know what games are going to get moved up. Of course, like Waltonville and North Clay moved up to 1 o'clock. So a weather is very winter storm is hard to predict, and weather is playing a big factor in a lot of games today already. So many different models, so many different forecasts, so many different discussions to be had, and, of course, various interpretations from various meteorologists. And so uh, right now some things starting to go all over the map in terms of what is predicted as far as depth of snow. So we'll see what happens. Of course, we are under a winter storm warning. We do know that. We'll not under it yet. We'll be under it, I believe, at midnight uh, when that starts, I think, until, what, 6 p.m. tomorrow? Allegedly. Yes. So we'll see what happens with that. All I know is it's going to be cold once yeah. that once that moves through. So you need to take the proper preparedness and, and precautions, uh, as you would with severe cold, severe cold temperatures. I mean, we're talking about, I believe, a high of minus 1. Coldest since 1994. Wow. Which means for most of the WMIX Sports part-time crew, uh, they were not alive the last time it was this cold. Which is kind of scary. Makes you feel old. Keys to the castle are in those hands. But anyhow, uh, all in all, it should be a good night for high school basketball for us. Looking forward to the Woodlawn Heron game, of course. Looking forward to our slate coming up over the coming weeks. And um, outside of, unless... We don't. As of right now, we're off on Wednesday the eighth, but we might get a postponed game uh, if the weather holds true to, to fill in. But other than that, we're we're looking at a pretty busy slate for WMIX Sports. You can find our broadcast schedule at WMIXSports.com, But we have some good matchups coming up. Some really nice games, both boys and girls side starting tonight. Uh, Monday is uh, Christ Our Rock Lutheran, I believe, at Weber Township Girls. Tuesday night, uh, that is Mount Vernon Lovejoy at Mount Vernon. Uh, Wednesday is off. Thursday, Christ or Rock Lutheran at Mount Vernon Lady Rams. Friday, Carbondale is hosting the Mount Vernon Rams. Saturday, uh, Waltonville versus Dietrich at St. Anthony at 1130. Then you have the Lady Rams host Triad in the afternoon, and then Northwest Academy comes calling. Then on Monday night, Lady Rams back on the road at Altoff. Tuesday night, Woodlawn hosts North Clay. Wednesday, SVW hosts Goreville Thursday is a split. Lady Rams hosts Carbondale on AM. Woodlawn at Weber on the FM Friday. Mount Vernon goes to Centralia, of course, because the, the Hall of Fame game in February is at Mount Vernon with Centralia. Then on Saturday, Waltonville plays Christopher at the SIU Shootout, Slukey Shootout. So a busy couple weeks that rolls you into midwinter tournament time with the Rams at Salem and in our Midland Trail teams in their own conference tournament. So a very busy January besides that Wednesday night off. Well, <coughs> my apologies, but uh, obviously a busy midwinter week for us. We try to get three tournaments on the air, and uh, we look forward to it. And we're, we're very blessed that coverage is warranted and, and coverage is desired, and 
you know, looking forward to the coming weeks as we always do. And, of course, and, uh, hoping that Mom Nature doesn't have too much to say about it, of course, over this coming week after she rolls in uh, late tonight and into tomorrow. So there you go. That's a quick look at our, our, at our coverage. But, you know, we didn't get a lot of time <clears throat> maybe to talk about it as much last week. But, you know, I, I like to kind of look at, and take a look at who's doing what and, and taking a look at some surprises. And, you know... I, at this point of the year, you see a team like Centralia undefeated and winning the CHT, and I hate to label them a surprise because the fact that they are good is never a surprise. I don't think I saw them as undefeated, and I don't necessarily think I saw anybody but Cahokia or O'Fallon or Alton winning that CHT. The South 7 has kind of made statements all year. I mentioned on the pregame last night. You know, with their dominant start in the turkey tournaments, with the way the South 7 competed then, they've had a very good Christmas holiday tournament season. This is a very deep South 7 conference. And, I mean, as far as, you know, picking one of the six that's going to get out maybe to a sectional and or get to a super, very difficult. Because, I mean, there's some quality teams. I mean, Mount Vernon's a good team. Centralia is looking really good right now. Carbondale's nothing to sneeze at. I mean, Cahokia is nothing to sneeze at. I mean, these are all very good basketball teams that you look at and you go, man, what's you know? How are you going to do this? And you know, with the regional setting the way it is, if you can get out of a regional into a sectional, and you battle some of the teams from the Springfield area or whatever in that case, and in the Mississippi Valley teams, and then you have a team like Lincoln who won the Collinsville tournament laying up there that you're going to have to go through at Springfield to get to Peoria in 3A in March. It's a very deep 3A pool of teams this year that can make some noise and make that trek to Peoria. Well, it is. And, you know, you look at the conference, and the conference as a whole with Cahokia. Uh, Cahokia kind of surprised finishing, I believe, fifth at Centralia. But you know, all in all, the South 7's a tough conference. You look at 1A and 2A, and... You know, Nashville, a preseason number one, the Associated Press poll has certainly had some struggles through up and down. Um, you know, maybe some other surprises. I, I, I think T-Town, people thought that they weren't going to be necessarily as good this year, but Andy Fahrenbacher has them at a 10-3 and three mark. Uh, they won the Effingham Tatopolis Christmas Classic. Uh, that set up exactly how they wanted it to and how they designed it for an Effingham T-Town championship game. Um, so they got their wish with that. T-Town won that one going away, so, you know, the wooden shoe's off to a nice start. Oakville always having to play a tough independent schedule's off to a good start. Uh, that's Woodlawn's only loss. So, really, when you kind of take a look at the landscape of Southern Illinois basketball, and, you know, Newton's off to a good start. They got a good win over St. Anthony last night. How they, of course, we're talking Newton out of the Little Illini Conference. Uh, St. Anthony and Altamont, probably the, the leaders of the national trail. But, really, when you take a look at the landscape right now, you know, there are a lot of good teams in Southern Illinois, but you know it may not be quite the, the greatness that we are accustomed to of the late 90s, or early 2000s, of course, kind of just going back to that closer perspective. Obviously, we're not comparing to generations past, but you know, all in all, things look to be a little bit better this year than they were last. I don't think anybody's really asserted themselves. I think in two-way especially in Southern Illinois, nobody's really jumped out and said, we're the team. We're going to take off. I mean, Pinckneyville's been hot and cold. Nashville was hot, and then they got to modern day and kind of brailed off the rails a little bit. Massac County is a 3A school that hasn't done, you know, they compete against the smaller schools. Nothing gets as big as or bigger than them. Harrisburg won that Eldorado tournament, and then they've had moments like last night at Massac where you're like, that they look disinterested. They stub their toe a little bit, so you can't really ride that horse. I mean, at two A is such a wide open affair. I think in one A, you know, everybody keeps waiting on Goreville to jump up and do something. They finished third at Cesar. Obviously, Woodlawn's coming south now. Nokomis and Altamont are um, looking up north as far as being two teams that you have to look at to get to Carbondale in March. So, I mean, as far as one A down here, you know, Christopher has played okay. They're in that same regional with Woodlawn. I, you know, again, the snow time in December, and you're going to lose some this week too probably coming up depending on what happens the next 24 hours. It's just a matter of you really don't have a team in 1A, 2A, 3. I don't think you can sit there and bet the ranch on and go, yeah, that team's going to end up in Peoria and boys, boys play. 
girls play, I, you know, Carterville's been good. Hamilton County's been good. Cesarville Waltonville's been very good, but then they stumbled a little bit with Heron and Pinckneyville last week. So, I mean, even on the girls' side. Nashville's Nashville. Nashville's Nashville, but they're not as strong as they were last year, as I said. I mean, you know, 1A, Goreville's not like they were the last couple of years. They're good, but not, you know, I mean – you start looking around, it's like, holy cow, where are you going to find somebody to ride that horse to Peoria and Bloomington? And I'm not real sure right now that you have you know, that team. Everybody wants to talk about Tyra Buss and Mount Carmel, but when they get to postseason play, and I'm not trying to knock their schedule on Indiana, but you did score 66 points and got beat. You know, that to me, yeah, it's a great feat. You scored 16-66, but you lost one of those games. Right. And that's what amazing. Are you do? That's You're, amazing. She has that record. That's a heck right. of an individual great record, accomplishment. Great feet, great accomplishment. But all all the accolades. But when you score sixty six and you get beat, it kind of tarnishes that to me. I don't think that's much. If I'm an individual, I'm like, yeah, I go score sixty six. Okay, great. Kobe scored eighty one, beat the Raptors. Wilt scored one hundred. He won his game. You've got to win something. I'm sorry, but you know how that's that's how I look at that. You've got sure. to win your game. <laughs> They've got to prove to me, Mount Carmel girls, that they can get past a sectional. They right. haven't been able to the last two years. Well, that's the thing. And, and, you know, down here you're looking at a Nashville or a Central. Central's had an incredible oh, year. Yeah. Central's, Central's loaded. Central's a team that could give them a run. I mean, but you look at Mount Carmel, sure they're going to win a regional more than likely. Maybe. I forget who all they're assigned with. I think they have the group that comes down, like your Casey's and your Lawrenceville's teams of that ilk. But, I mean, they could win that. But, I mean, are the Lady Aces really going to win a sectional? They, they might. They might get to a super. But if you're looking at a team like T-Town or you have to get past the Breeze Central in a, in a sectional, that's going to be tough. Tough of the one-woman show. Um, I, I mean, she's still going to get her points. She's going to get her. She's a great player. Probably one of the best girls basketball players we've ever seen. But it's a one-woman show. They host their own regional. Because I mapped this out for Andy Sloan. With, um, I forgot Casey what I Westfield, Lawrenceville, Marshall, and Robinson. And then if you get to the sectional, you're looking at Hamilton County. Oh, wow, they go over there. They could win that sectional because there's really not much on that side. They get to the super. They're on the other side Bree of Central, Central Bree Central's on the other side. Nashville, one of those two will come out and end up at Salem. Of course, we're coming in loud and clear on I-55, mile marker 66. Look. So... That's not bad. That's about 14 miles north of Litchfield. Right. So I, I'm not trying to downplay. I know you've got 4,000 points. I know you've won a lot of games, but I'm waiting. You know, get, yeah. get me past the regional, get me past the sectional, and see what you can do. Sure. That's, that's when I want to see the money cart. 4,000 points plus, amazing, no doubt. But postseason time, when the, when the cash window is open, are you going to get cash or are you going to send it the other way? Certainly no fault in that. It's good logic. And, you know, we obviously, that's we're not ripping on a, on a kid, but it's, no, it's a I'm case of the team. team. Right. It's a case of the team is. You know, Nashville, Bree Central, T Town, Hamilton County. You know, that's what I'm looking at. I think on that side, Mount Carmel is probably a favorite to win a regional sure. and sectional way looking at the teams. Uh, a lot of the tougher teams, your Carterville, Hamilton County, Central, Nationals of the world are all on the other side. Right. So you kind of stay away from it to get your way to the Super. So Kind of curious what we're going to see out of the Flora Wolf gals. That's another one. Once that, once that all comes. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, 1A is kind of a cluster right now because, you know, you think to the regional we're going to be predominantly at Wayne City. You know, it's probably going to be Wayne City, Galatia. Or no, yeah. Thinking back real quick. So you take a look there. You just kind of take a look at the the landscape of girls basketball right now. And looking at 3A, I mean, you have a Massac regional, I believe, that has Centralia, Mount Vernon, Massac, Heron, Carbondale, Marion. Actually, that's too many teams. Centralia, Marion may not be there. But anyhow, that, that, that in itself is going to be a tough regional for like a team like the Lady Rams. I mean, you look at Massac, you look at Heron, you know, Lady Rams saw Massac at the Nashville tournament, saw what happened there. You, you have... I believe Heron coming up the day before Valentine's Day at Memorial Gymnasium this year, where last year's regional was. So, you know, there's no clear cut. You're right. There's really no clear Mm-mm. cut. I mean, obviously, here you look at, you know, a Heron regional that has Mount Vernon, Marion, Carbondale, Massac, Heron. 
You know, Centralia probably going to be a favorite in their regional and maybe a favorite overall <laughs> to, to get out of the South. But you look at a Cahokia, they'll be standing in the way. But Cahokia's recent struggles have, you know, they're not as clear cut as they once were. Altov could put it together again. <coughs> so who knows? What we do know is we have a lot of coverage getting ready to come your way in a short amount of time. You can always find our broadcast schedule at WMIXSports.com. We update you daily on our schedule where we're at on Twitter at WMIXSports. And we're always on Facebook as well. We hope you enjoyed today's program. We're back here next week, of course, after the 8 o'clock news until 10 o'clock. Right here on AM 940, always at WMIXSports.com. We'll work on getting the archive up after the program. Where you can always find, if you missed a broadcast, you missed a game, you missed whatever. If it's a local sports broadcast, we have it on WMIXSports.com. So check that out. Working on the Rams video from last night as well. It's all coming up on WMIXSports.com. NBC News is coming your way at the top of the hour. We hope you'll stay tuned today. What a great day. Woodlawn Cardinals basketball coming up tonight on the WIX Sports Basketball Showcase. The Heron Tigers come to Science Gymnasium for a second time. Can the Cardinals improve to 3-0 over the Tigers? Find out tonight. WIX FM 94.1, WIXSports.com. This is WIX Mount Vernon. This has been the Saturday Sports Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. NBC News now.